Good morning, yogis. Welcome to our practice. So I've got one dog here. The other one decided she was going to go lay in the sun, but she might be joining us as well. I hope you're all snuggled into your special place in your house. We talk about this all the time. Some place where we can go to that's warm and smells good and the sound of the bells and trying to block out all the extraneous noises. Of all times, this couldn't be a more perfect time to see if we can let everything go on the outside and bring ourselves within to our breath. So maybe find a comfortable place in a half lotus or virasana or sit in a chair, someplace that's comfortable and you're not feeling like you're having to hold a posture. I'm sitting on the edge of a blanket. Tiffany's on the edge of a block there, something to take our pelvis a little bit higher. We know that when we sit and our back rounds out and our chest caves in, it's not a good way to begin that whole lengthening. So see if you can find a place to prop yourself up and feel that that pelvic bowl is tilting slightly forward. If you're comfortable with it, close your eyes. We know that when we close our eyes, we block out the visuals and cut down on the distractions. We go within. For a moment here, listen to what your insides are telling you. We have all kinds of interoceptors throughout our bodies feeding back information to our brains to keep us safe. And if we listen, we can attend to some of those needs. So feel maybe in your bodies where Maybe a little bit of tension or a little bit of an ache. Maybe some blockage. Maybe it's your mind. See if you can identify before we begin practice where we're starting. We'll see hopefully at the end of this journey, feeling really wonderful and aligned and calm. Feel your anatomical touch points to the earth, your sit bones, maybe the sides of your legs or your feet, grounding us, creating a purpose, a place, creating this platform. We can feel that slightly tilted anterior position of the pelvis, inspiring the arch in our low back. It's the natural curve. Feel the weight of your thighs releasing towards the earth. Maybe the softening of the musculature in your hips. Perhaps you can feel the energy moving from your hips down your thighs out your knees directed towards the floor. Take your hands to the bottom of your rib cage. Draw your hands closer together, maybe interlace the fingers as we draw in that low rib ring. Uriana Banda, our thoracic bind, it's transversus abdominis, our rib ring closer. We wanna hold those ribs together so that when you bring your chest tall, what opens is the middle back without popping those ribs forward. Release your hands back down towards your thighs, maybe the backs of the hands on the knees. Find a mudra, maybe the index and thumb touching. Release your elbows towards the earth. Feel how the shoulder blades release naturally down the back and the broadness of the chest and the collarbones. And perhaps you can feel your head has moved into that bobble-headed place unweighted. So not forward and not backward, but evenly balanced over the curves in our spine. Invite your breath now, our breath such a potent component of our practice. And of all times, being able to capture our breath now to calm our minds. I suggest maybe you inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth through pursed lips or find what feels best for you. We know that inhaling through our nose will help to warm and hydrate and purify the air, the prana, the life force as we invite it in. 
And as you breathe out through the pursed lips, you can hear and feel the exhaust in the wind as all the metabolites, all the junk, all the carbon dioxide, all the exhaust that we no longer need in our bodies or in our minds. Every single one of us has a bunch of clutter in our minds these days. So see if you can take this opportunity with all of us sitting here to relieve yourself of some of the pressure and the anxiety and all the overload that we're experiencing these days. This is why we are practicing. Think of this collective consciousness, all of us around the world, breathing and posturing together, creating a different mindset, a place of calm and solitude and compassion. Follow the rhythm of your breath, again with your eyes closed if you're comfortable with it. See where the breath is. Is it up high in the neck and the throat? Is it more down through the middle ribs? Is it low down in your belly and your diaphragm? See if you can maybe find a way to spread the breath throughout. As you inhale, that diaphragm will lower, create more space for your lungs, more room for the air. And as you exhale, the natural recoil of the lungs, the diaphragm will rise and we expel the exhaust. Maybe at the end of it, use a bit of your abdominals to press out some of the residual air that's in the bottom of your lungs. Let's sit for a minute or so together. See if you can find your breath, perhaps through this virtual practice, we can unite our breath. Before you open your eyes, take your thumbs and cross them like bird wings, place them right over the heart chakra, the center of the chest, our compassion center. Feel your heartbeat inside your chest. Maybe feel the warmth of the green colored light from the heart chakra emanating out into your palms. Let's stop for a moment here and feel our humanness. Blink the eyes open, look at the front of your mat. Bring the gaze back up. Let's go ahead and release our hands back behind us. Fingertips touch the earth. See if you can feel a connection, some sort of energetic connection of your body to the earth. Try not to lean back into the hands, but instead just use the hands as this energetic connection. Turn your hands now so the palms face forward, the thumbs will spin backwards. We open up our chest, collarbones. You can feel the turning of the ball and the socket in your shoulders, the external rotation component of your shoulders away from all the internal spiral. Take your hands across from your hips now, press the fingertips into the earth, sit bones into the earth and see if you can feel the rise to the crown of your head. So we're never thumb tacked down, we're placed on the earth, rooted, but rising at the same time. Perhaps you can feel some of the musculature in your back, your multifidi muscles that periscope the spine real tall. Let's float our hands up, take them up, 
And go ahead and look up towards the sky. Open your palms and send out all your best energies around this planet of ours, all the people suffering, all of us trying to make a difference by staying home and being mindful of staying away from each other physically, but connecting through platforms like this. Draw your hands a little closer together, squeeze that imaginary energy globe, ignite that low rib ring again, and then take your thumbs back behind you. See if you can open up from your upper back rather than through the armpits. Nice, fit your ears between your elbows, touch your palms together and change your hands down to steeple hands. Index fingers go to the sky. Sit bones go deep down into the earth. Deep inhale. And on the exhale, let your hands float down through main central. They'll touch your forehead, tip of your nose, your lips, your throat, onto your heart. When the thumbs are on the heart, raise the heart. Feel the gentle back bend of your upper back and exude all that compassion from your hearts. Release your hands back to the floor and let's go ahead and open our neck. Keep the right hand glued to the earth, inhale. And on the exhale, let your left ear very slowly soften over towards the left shoulder. The weight of your head and gravity is doing all the work here. See if you can prevent the pulling down, but instead just the softening through the whole right side of the neck, your upper trapezius, levator scapulae. Inhale. And on your exhale, take your right ear and move it up towards the sky. So the whole right side of the neck will contract for a moment and then release and see if maybe that left ear softens a bit more towards the left shoulder. Inhale the head back up through center. And on the exhale, reverse. Left hand holds the floor, the anchor. The right ear will soften into the right shoulder. Maybe on this side, envision the spine in a side bend. Opening up, allowing the peripheral nerves to escape through the side of the spine. Inhale, exhale, take the left ear up towards the sky. Left side of the neck will contract. Release it and the right ear might soften a bit more towards that right shoulder. Inhale, the head back up through center. And on the exhale, left hand turn with your chin. Keep it on a horizon line. Chin stays on horizon line. It's the advantageous position to find the rotation in our neck. See if you can keep this pure to your neck, the seven vertebrae in the neck without rolling through the shoulders. Inhale back through center, exhale around to the right. Chin stays on horizon, explore where the restrictions might be. Inhale back through center, exhale around to the left again. Same thing we just did, maybe a little bit cleaner this time. And if you choose to go a bit further, inhale. Exhale, right hand holds the floor, bring your chin out towards her to the left shoulder point. See if you can touch down excavating out some of the tension and the tightness of the right side of the neck there, sternocleidomastoid, scalenes. Inhale the head back up, exhale around to the right. Inhale, exhale, left hand holds the floor, bring the chin out towards her to the right shoulder point. Inhale back through center, exhale drop your chin to the jugular notch between the two collarbones. A little shelf for your mandible, your chin to fit in too. Try not to let the chest cave in, but keep the chest nice and tall. Let's go ahead and trace our chin now on our collarbone. Inhale, exhale, trace the chin along the line of the right collarbone. Keep it on the collarbone for safety. If you can't bring it all the way around, just stop where your intellect tells you. Inhale back through center. Exhale around to the left, chin stays on collarbone. Take it around. Inhale back through center. On the exhale, reaffirm the press of the hands and the sit bones and let your chin slide down, sternum towards that heart chakra, letting the weight of your head flex your spine. Again, shoulders don't cave in, it's all through the neck. Inhale your head back up to center. On the exhale, push your chest forward, lift the crown of your head to the sky, 
Initiate the movement from the middle back, moving our spines into extension and then allow the head to slowly release back. Trying to find maybe a new spot or two where you can allow that spine to extend. If there's any pain in your spine or dizziness, please back off of this. Beautiful, pull your head back up, center position. If you're sitting in half lotus, cross your legs, your opposite uncommon cross. Let's go ahead and float our arms up for cactus arms or goalpost arms. Fingers widespread, abducted. Elbows pulled out to the side of the room, pull back a little bit. Broadening the chest and collarbones. Turn your thumbs backwards now for hitchhiker hands. Thumbs go back and they drop back. Take them back, find the external rotation in your shoulders, ball and socket. Shine the palms forward, big wide open palms, and then go ahead and drop them down like laundry on the line. Hands towards the floor, elbows out to the side of the room. Let's go back and forth with that a few times. Bring them back up, thumbs go backwards. Shoulders externally rotate, yep. Hands forward, drop them down. Lubricating our joints, creating this dissociated movements. Everything doesn't have to move, but trying to find the separation of the, the joints. Beautiful. Inhale. On your exhale, go ahead and bring your arms together. Fly machine arms. Touch your palms and elbows together. Turn your palms to face you now. Inhale. On your exhale, push the sides of the hands and the elbows together and slowly start to bring the elbows up. Keep them together. And when you feel you can't keep them together anymore, that's where you stop and pause for a moment. Pull the elbows apart now. Index and middle fingers touch, big broad palms. Inhale, exhale, drop the elbows down slowly through that thick fluid. The elbows dock into the side pockets and let's buzz through that one more time. Up, out, and down. Elbows stay close into your side and turn your light bulbs. The wrists and palms are free. See if you can find the movement, the pronation and supination of the forearms. Becomes the queen wave. And then the arms go up overhead for your hallelujah arms. Back down through queen wave, through light bulb hands. And go ahead and shake out your hands a few times. See if you can bring some energies and movement into your wrists and palms. Beautiful. Bring your arms up. Float them out like big bird wings. Take your shoulders up to your ears and then let's drop them and see if we can not bring our shoulders to our ears for the rest of our practice. Grab onto your imaginary tennis balls and we'll flap our wings. So these long pterodactyl arms trying to pump some blood and synovial fluid through our shoulders, our rotator cuff and deltoids. Let's touch down and fly them back up again. Nice, easy bird wings. Beautiful. Let's take our pterodactyl arms now and turn them into eagle arms. Right goes on top, left on bottom. If you can, have the fingers of your left hand in the palm of your right and your tricep flesh parallel to the floor. Inhale. On your exhale, push the right elbow into the left and draw your shoulder blades forward. So we're not leaning forward, your spine isn't moving, but ideally, the shoulder blades protracting, moving them on the rib cage. Beautiful, draw them back, let them dock into place, release the arms down and take them up the opposite way, left on, right, on top, right on bottom. Press palm to fingers, fingers to palm, inhale. Exhale, push left into right, draw those blades forward. Find some lubrication in the joints. Nice, draw the blades back. Go ahead, release them down. Good. Let's take our hands now. Let's use the thumbs on the back of your skull, the occiput. So these are all beautiful ways to help to calm our system, to balance our scales. Take your thumbs and drag them through the back of your skull, right where your skull meets your neck. The occipital ridge, your fingers will end up on the mastoid bones behind your ears. Do the same a few times, stimulating that occipital ridge, takes us into a parasympathetic zone. 
That's the relaxation zone. Like I just said, balancing the scales. Too much sympathetic coming at us now. We need to pick up on our parasympathetic. Nice. Take your index fingers and touch your third eye and then draw the fingers through the eyebrows over to the temples. Do some clockwise and counterclockwise circles with your index at the temples. And do it one more time. Start at the third eye, draw them through. I'll end up on the temples clockwise and counterclockwise. Take your thumb and index under your ears now. And do a little bit of a pinch on the perimeter of the ear. Comes from our auriculotherapy, the acupressure, acupuncture of the ears work back up. Very potent points on these ears of ours. Have your thumb and index on the end of the ear there and pull them away from your face. You'll move the connective tissue, the fascia, away from the temporomandibular joint, the jaw. Let your jaw go side to side, maybe up and down, and maybe some circles. See if you can clear out some of the, the noise. Okay, guys, take your hands down, rub them together. Create some heat in your palms, and then we're gonna cup our ears and blast furnace ourselves with some heat. Go ahead and cup your ears. And take them away from your face, beautiful. Let's do one more pose seated here. Probably we'll need a block, so have a block ready for you to the right side. Take your right hand out onto the earth, it's a down dog hand, and take your left hand, the L-shaped hand on the top of your left thigh. The idea here is we're gonna hold our left thigh down, so when we start to bend our elbow, what opens is your left waistline, quadratus lumborum. So try not to just come on over onto your elbow, but keep that sit bone down and start to pull your shirt from your waistband finding the length of that side body. If your elbow is not close to the ground, that's what your block is for. Go ahead and put it down, put your elbow down on that block. Back bend your upper back. Let the left shoulder roll back and look up. And then bring your head back to neutral and let the right ear release towards the right shoulder. Inhale the left hand up. And on the exhale, take the left hand across town and you'll feel that yummy stretch sensation, maybe a burning feel from the top of the pelvis, through the waistline, into the ribs, up into your armpit and out your fingertips. Right arm is stable, we're not caved into it, but pushing the hand and elbow into the ground to maintain some stability. Go ahead and inhale, bring your block with you if you need it for the other side, and let's switch. Put the block down. Right hand, else shape, holds that right thigh down. Inhale. Exhale, start to drop the left elbow. See if you can cue into the right side of the waistline, trying to open up. If the elbow doesn't quite touch the earth, that's what your block is for. Back bend your upper back, let the right shoulder roll back and look up. Gaze back to center, let the left ear move towards the left shoulder into a side bend. Inhale the right hand up and slowly let it pass over, reach to the opposite side of the room. Left hand and left elbow presses into the earth, keep stability and see if you can explore where that resistance might be. Nice, inhale yourself back up, tall sit position. Close your eyes for a moment. See what's happened to us at the start of our practice already. I imagine the same is happening for you. All that exists in the real world is now not quite so prevalent. Maybe we can change our perspective. The power of our practice to transport us out of this panic and anxiety into our breath and peace and quiet. Beautiful. Let's move our blankets now. Come onto all fours on your mat. Let's open up our calves. 
So hands on the mat, take your right foot back behind you, curl your toes under and push your heel to the back of the room. Notice how Kamir is very interested in this yoga practice. Maybe he'll do a down dog for us if we're lucky. Push your right heel back, take the crown of your head forward and push the back of the right knee up towards the heavens and feel that opening of your calf, your gastroc and your hamstring. All right, guys, right leg comes forward, left leg goes back, same thing. Push the heel back, crown forward, back of the knee up towards the heavens. <laughs> same thing again, right leg, take it back behind you. Heel back, crown forward. Now let's roll through the toes. Come onto the tips of the toes, round over, and now we're on a plantar flexed right ankle, like a Barbie foot, right? The top of the foot on the mat, articulating through the tarsals and metatarsals, phalanges of our feet. Go back through the toes, see if you can feel the opening there and push your heel back, maybe not quite so intense. Opposite leg, push the heel back. Come onto the tip of the toes, over we go, onto a plantar flexed ankle back through, push the heel back. Good, both knees together now, toes curled under, the big toe knuckle and the inside ankle bones touch, and in an ideal world, we come and sit back on our heels for a broken toe stretch. If this is too much for your feet, you can put a block underneath your knees or put something between, between your buttocks and your heels and we'll lessen some of the sensations. Draw the low ribs in, bring your heart real tall, and release the middle fingers towards the earth. So that downward pull, the winds, the vayus, this is our apana vayu, our grounding. Udana vayu, the lifting. See if you can feel that. Reaching towards the earth, but concurrently the crown of the head going right through the ceiling. Beautiful. Draw your arms up now, way up over your head. Elbows to the ears, take the right hand behind the left, press the palms together, squeeze the elbows to the ears, pull the low ribs in and back bend your upper back. Switch the press of the palms, palm to palm, elbows, ears, ribs in, back bend your upper back. Release your arms back to the earth. Hands forward on the mat, release the feet, go ahead and kick them out. Then see if you can sit back in your version of your asana, hero, heroine's pose. Customizing this, if it's too much for your ankles, put a blanket underneath your instep, maybe between your hamstrings and your calves, or maybe sit on a block. Take your right hand to your knee and lift your knee. Left hand to the left knee, lift the knee, clear the fascia. And take your hands back now so your thumbs are on the little toes or the sides of your feet. Lean back a bit further. Bring the elbows closer in towards each other and go ahead and lift your buttocks off your heels and push the pelvis towards the sky. Feel the opening of your quads, your hip flexors as they cross over the hips. Let's go ahead and put the sit bones back down. Ideally, they'll be outside your heels. Pull your belly in and launch your child forward very slowly using the muscles to help to decelerate you towards the earth. If possible, touch your third eye to the earth or maybe slide a blanket or a block underneath, touch down. Inhale, exhale, draw yourself up, pull your ribs in, pull the belly in, round up, back up, shoulders go back behind you, hands back behind you, palms flat to the earth again, elbows drawn in, lift the hips, open the fronts of the quads and hand and hip flexors. Put your sit bones back down and lean back again a little bit. Bend your right elbow, look over your right shoulder. So we have an extension rotation. Inhale back through center. Bend your left elbow, look over your left shoulder. Back to center. Lean back a little further if possible onto the tops of your feet and take your shins off the ground. Put your shins back down, pull your bellies in, launch your child forward and see if you can allow that third eye again to touch the earth. 
backs of the hands on the bottom of the feet, elbows released towards the earth. We find a big, broad, open back. Draw yourself back up again, pull your belly in. Shoulders back, hands touch the earth. Release back one more time. See if you can lean back and let your head release back into extension now for a modified camel. Beautiful, pull yourself back up to neutral. Take the knees wide, big toes are touching. Let's walk out now a wide child. So walk your hands forward, keeping your sit bones back. Keep an eye on the target, your hands. And when you feel you've come out as far as you can go, change those hands now to down dog hands. Index forward, thumb rolled towards the index. And then see if you can put your elbows down for sphinx arm. See if you can put your forehead down on the ground now. And let your pelvis shift to the right and shift to the left. We're lubricating our hips, creating some softness. Beautiful. Pull the pelvis back to its neutral. Let's inhale back up through the scared cat. So the whole spine rounds. Knees come back together. Inhale. On the exhale, pull your body weight forward so your shoulders are over your wrist. Inhale again. And on the exhale, we're gonna release our cobras towards the earth, so a hanging cobra. Press your hands into the earth, release the shoulders, push your heart forward, and allow your belly to start to soften. If this is pinchy in your low back, put a block underneath your pubic bone. Let's go ahead and start to bend our elbows slightly. As we start to bend the elbows, we release the pelvis towards the earth. So a slow chaturanga style. See if you can put your pelvis down, not your belly button. Feel the opening through the spine. Let's reverse again, pull it back up, scared cat. Knees go wide, big toes touch, push back, wide child. Maybe a little bit more lubricated this time, a little bit more soft. Release the elbows to the earth, sphinx on. Shift the pelvis right, shift the pelvis left. Shift the pelvis right, shift the pelvis left. Come back to neutral. Inhale back up, scared cat. Exhale, body weight comes forward and we start to release the cobra to the earth. Belly soft. Feel the stretch from the pubic bone right up to your chin. Inhale. On the exhale, look over your right shoulder. Inhale back through center. Exhale, look over your left shoulder. Inhale back through center, look up. Inhale back to center, bend your elbows. Slowly release the pelvis towards the earth. Last time, scared cat. Big toes touch, push back, wide child. Pause in your wide child for a moment here. Turn your palms to the sky for the hopeful pose. Palms turn to the sky. We hope for something yummy to drop into our hands, into our lives. Pause here for a moment. Feel the gratitude of our practice, of our community, forced to be apart, but bound to stay together. Feel your heartbeats. Again, feel the gratitude. Our big hearts, our empathetic selves, balancing our scales. Nice, turn your palms back down towards the earth, slide them back underneath your shoulders, and press back onto all fours. Let's go through some cat-cows. Start to bring your tailbone towards the sky, your sacrum will release towards the earth. Follow that chain of events right through the thoracic spine, up into the neck as we look up. Keep the gaze up, inhale, and on the exhale, gaze is up, but the tailbone starts to drop. Push the spinous processes, the tips of the vertebrae, up towards the sky, and then allow the crown of your head to release to the earth, nice and soft like a pendulum. Inhale, exhale, go back through that tailbone. 
sacrum, lumbar spine, thoracic spine, cervical spine. Go back and forth with this several times. I suggest you close your eyes. And when you close your eyes, the sensations become that much more apparent. Your brain is picking up on all of this. Try to find your stickiest spot. Which segment hasn't moved in a while? And see if you can direct some energy towards that spot. Take a moment now for your own funky dance. Do what feels right for you. Maybe you'll shift your hips to the side. Maybe you'll bend some elbows and do some figure eights. Maybe you'll take your ears to your shoulders. Nobody's watching. So do what's right for you. Do what your body needs. Feed your body what it desires. Good, let's get back to our mid backs now. So same start position here. Just turn your hand so the fingers face in and we'll bend our elbows to 45 degrees. You can notice here my low back and my neck are not going to move. Maybe just watch this one real quick. I'm gonna drop my heart towards the floor, pinch a pencil between my shoulder blades, and then I'm gonna puff up center of my back. So try not to move through your, your neck and your low back and don't change your elbows, but instead ride that wave between the shoulder blades. Go ahead and do that a few times. See if you can find some movement, some opening of that thoracic spine. Beautiful, come on back to neutral. Let's go right into our twisted child. If your knees are uncomfortable on your mat, certainly slide a blanket underneath your knees. Take your right hand forward onto the mat and inhale your left hand out to the left. Look up at your left hand. Notice it's easy to do this if you shift your whole pelvis over to the left. Try not to let that happen. Keep your pelvis in neutral and take your left hand up. Pause for a moment there, strengthen those muscles. Big inhale. And on your exhale, slide the left hand underneath, thread your needle. Shoulder, left shoulder and the ear go down. See if you can have your sit bones to the back of the room again. Try not to let the pelvis shift. Underneath arm, turn that left hand up and down a few times, articulating our shoulder socket. Come back to neutral left hand, palm up, slide it through a little further. And then walk your right hand out top of your mat onto the floor perhaps. Continue walking that right hand around to the left so the right elbow might end up over your right ear. Press the right hand into the earth and create the rotation through that thoracic spine. Feel the opening. Slide the hand, right hand up. It's gonna be in front of your left elbow. Inhale. On your exhale, push your right hand into the earth and it will help you to create more rotation through that thoracic spine. Those of you who practice with me know that we rotate from our rib cage up. So we're not turning our low backs. Maybe you can take your right hand now and put it onto your sacrum. So the palm is on the sacrum, middle finger down towards the back of the room. Press your hand, right hand into the sacrum and create a little bit more rotation. Maybe you can feed the right hand into the left hip crease. Use that as your bind. Create some spiral. Take your hand back onto the floor, wherever it was. Push back up. Realize that we're not only moving through our physical form, but we're helping to relax our system and we're tapping into our endocrine system as well. Our adrenal glands getting a nice squeeze as we move into these rotations, the adrenals having to do so much with our stress response. Take the left hand forward onto the floor. Inhale the right hand out to the side and take it up. So we can encourage the blood flow to move through these endocrine organs. We can try to keep ourselves so safe, keep all of our pieces working in these stressful times. Inhale. Exhale, thread your needle, take it through. Right shoulder down, side of your head down. Be sure the sit bones are to the back of the room. Turn the right palm up and down several times. Come to rest, right palm is up, slide it through, and walk your left hand forward. 
on the floor, reach out. Maybe continue walking it around to the right so the left elbow is over the left ear. You push the palm into the floor and find that yummy opening. Take the left hand back, slide it. It's going to end up in front of the right shoulder, right elbow. Press the left hand into the earth and create that rotation through the ribs. Maybe the left hand will go on to the sacrum, middle finger towards the back of the room. Press the hand into the sacrum, create more rotation. And maybe you'll feed that hand into the opposite hip crease. See what you can inspire. Left hand back to the floor. Push yourself back up, beautiful. Come sit back in Varasana for just a moment. Take your hands to the sky and come back through your main central. All right, guys, let's go ahead and put ourselves onto our backs. Have a block ready for you. So make your way down any way that you'd like to onto your back. Go ahead and draw your knees to your chest. One hand on each knee, draw them up nice and tight. Provided you don't have an active disc problem in your low back, go ahead and roll your low back off the floor for a moment. And then put your sacrum back down. So notice what happens, our sacrum goes down and we find that beautiful arch in our low backs. One hand on each knee, go ahead and take the knees out to in. Do that a few times, it's a ball in the socket. Lubricating. And then reverse, in to out. And see if you can feel some freedom in your, your hip sockets there. Put your feet down on the floor. Thank you, Lena. Middle fingers touch your heels. Lift your toes. And go ahead and put your toes back down again. We're going to bridge. Inhale. On the exhale, push your feet into the earth. Draw the imaginary egg up into your pelvis. Tack your belly down towards the ground and then lift your hips off the earth. So we've already prepped and opened our hips a bit. See if you can figure out what I'm saying here. Don't go into your low back to pop it, but instead open the fronts of your hips. Keep your low back in somewhat of a neutral, long neck. Take your hands underneath your back, interlace your fingers, and bring your shoulder blades underneath you. Look down at your heart. So the idea here is we open our hearts we don't go into a huge low back bend. Maybe you'll stay here. You'd like to go a bit further. Take your elbows now, push them into the earth for robot arms. We're using our latissimus muscles here, our lats, to help to extend our shoulders and pop our hearts. Maybe you'll straighten out your arms now, touch the sky with your fingertips. Squeeze an imaginary block between your knees, contain the knees. Take your arms up over your head if that works for you. The thumbs touch the earth. Maybe the backs of the hands will touch the earth. Feel how long your bodies are. Go back through your checklist, press the feet, pull up the egg, tack down the fabric, squeeze the block. Maybe move your knees towards the front of the room. Let's come out of this. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, elbows go down. Release the arms and slowly start to release your spine to the ground. Come through the middle back. When you get to the bottom of the rib cage, skip the low back and imprint your sacrum, yes, and we'll preserve our curves. Take the soles of your feet together, Supta Bona Konasana now, pushing the soles of the feet together, knees out to the side of the room, turn your palms up, rest for a moment. Let's go back into our bridge. Take your hands to the outsides of your legs, move your knees back to neutral, take your feet apart, middle fingers touch the heels. Unless your arms are short, turn your palms up, back through it, inhale. Exhale, push the soles of the feet into the earth, not the toes. Pull up your imaginary egg, tack down your fabric and very slowly lift your hips off the ground. See if you can create one long platform here, the whole front of your hips open. Interlace the fingers underneath your back, do your shimmy shoulders. Pop the heart, look down at the chest, bring your heart to your face. Contain that low rib ring. Elbows to the sides, robot arms. 
Straighten your arms, fingertips touch the sky. Take the arms back over the head, thumbs will touch, maybe the backs of the hands will touch. Move the knees to the front of the room, stretch out your bridge. Inhale the arms back up, exhale, elbows release, arms release, slowly releasing the system towards the floor. Try to skip the low back, imprint the sacrum, you got it, put the soles of your feet together again, Bona Konasana. Let your legs move side to side so maybe the sides of the thighs will touch the earth through these pinwheel legs. Hands to the outsides of the legs, move the knees back together. Let's get into our psoas block sequence. Many people ask for this one. Grab your blocks. Take the block and put it underneath your sacrum. You guys know where your sacrums are, and if you don't, it's the triangle bone between your two pelvic bones. You'll know when the block is in the right place. You'll know when it's not in the right place. It doesn't feel so good. So feel free to keep adjusting the block as we go through this. Okie doke. Straighten out your right leg, slide it down your mat. It's a Tadasana leg, right? So powerful. Pushing that right foot through the wall that's in front of you there. Find that contraction, then let it release and it will roll out to the right side. It's a natural position for your hip. Keep the right leg out and do the same thing with the left now. Straighten out your left leg. It'll be a Tadasana leg. And then release it and it will roll to the side. And provided your dog's not in your way, you'll be able to do that. <laughs> Good. So both legs now externally rotated. Oh boy, this is where we open up the whole front of our pelvis and free up all this space. So take your hands and find your belly button. And then we'll take the fingers about two inches away from your belly button each side and just dig in. It doesn't matter if you're in the exact right place. See if you can find the psoas muscles there, your hip flexors. They go from your spine through the bowl of the pelvis. Let's trace them down. And they end up on the inside of your thigh. Your psoas is the only muscle that spans from your spine to your legs. Beautiful. If your back is not comfortable here, readjust your block to see if you can find some comfort. Take your arms up over your head and now reach to the back of the room. So you're stretched out. See if you can take your right hand around your left wrist and lengthen that left side body. Left to right, lengthen the right side body. Do that a few times back and forth. And then let one palm, the back of one hand, rest in the other palm and just stretch out this beautiful body of yours. Close your eyes if you're comfortable with it. This is an advantageous position to find your breath. Our rib cage is huge here. Think about this concept. The bigger the circumference of the rib cage, the more your lungs can fill to capacity. Your lungs have a certain amount of capacity to them, like a gas tank, but sometimes we can't fill it up because the ribs are restricting it. Inhale through your nose and fill up those lungs. Hold the breath for a second or two at the end of your inhale. Let it slowly start to seep out. And at the end, use your abdominals, pull your belly to your spine and push out the rest of the sludge. Let's do three total, two more. Inhale. Hold the breath for a second. Exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath for a second. Exhale. Maybe you can feel the warmth and the calmness come over you. Take your arms one at a time back to your side. And then go ahead and bend your knees, put your feet on the floor. Readjust the block if necessary. 
Take your hands around the front of your right knee and draw the knee to your chest. So you can feel your sacrum stays on the block. The low back is hanging off the back of the block in extension, its natural curve. Circle your ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. See if you can open up some of the tarsal bones in the foot and then spread your toes. See if you can find the strength of those interossei muscles in your feet. Good, switch your hands now to behind your right knee and draw the knee up towards the chest. Maybe your thigh will rest on your rib cage. Let's open our hamstrings now. Inhale. Exhale. Next inhale, let the legs straighten out. The right leg will straighten out. Your hands will stay behind your knee. If your hamstrings are loose enough, your hip will go to 90 degrees. If the hamstrings are not so loose, then release that down a little bit further, but try to keep the right knee straight. Let's go back and forth with that a few times. Draw the knee in towards the chest. You'll stretch your hamstring over the sit bone. That's the proximal attachment. And then release and the knee straightens and that's the distal attachment behind the knee. Fan the flames with this a few times, drawing it in, straightening it out, drawing it in, straightening it out. And let's go ahead and draw it in now and keep it in. And we'll do what's called a lateral glide. You'll take that whole right thigh and move it to the right a bit so that your thigh clears over your belly, chest, ribs. Go ahead and take the sole of the right foot and stand it on the sky now so we're in half a happy baby. If you can easily reach up and grab the outside border of that right foot, go ahead and do that and keep the knee close into the chest. If that's too far, then just have your hands behind your knee or you can throw a strap over the bottom of the foot. Let's try to keep our half a happy baby nice and happy here and straighten out your left leg. This is the stretch now for the left thigh. It's your psoas and iliacus muscles, the top of your quad. Maybe you'll notice that your left knee is slightly bent, your quad's tight. Take the left hand up overhead now and stretch out that whole left side body. Pause for a moment or two, find your breath, feed into the spot that feels like it's tense, and release it. Nice, take the hand back, left hand, put your foot on the floor, left foot, and then put your right foot on the floor. Let's do the other side, and then we'll marry these all together. So virtually the same thing. Draw the left knee to the chest, now hands are in front of the knee, we close down the knee, unless you've got a meniscal problem or osteoarthritis in the knee joint, this is a good thing to do to lubricate. Circle your ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. Spread the toes. Switch the hands behind the knee now, draw it up to the chest. Let's release the hamstring, so free it up. Hand goes behind the knee or behind the thigh, toes pulled to the face. Go back and forth with that a few times. Hamstring stretch over sit bone. Hamstring stretch over your knee. Hamstring stretch sit bone. Hamstring stretch knee. Bring it back in again, draw it in nice and tight. Take the left leg, lateral glide, send it over to the left a little so your thigh will be away from your ribs and belly chest. Take the sole of the left foot, stand it on the sky. If you can grab the outside border of the foot without having, without having to reach for it too much, and then straighten your right leg, send it down the mat. Identifying your body, every one of us will be slightly different. Maybe it's tightness of your psoas and iliacus at your hip. Maybe it's your quad. Maybe it's all of it. Maybe that's why we're doing this. Take the right arm up over your head, reach to the back of the room. Hand comes back. Draw both knees into your chest now. You might need to readjust the block so that you can balance your sacrum on it. Knees come into the chest. Take your hands onto the bottom of your block now and straighten out your legs for candlestick legs. 
So with your block underneath you, you've got another six inches or so of hamstring length. See if you can find the opening of those hamstrings. Ideally, the legs are straight up to the sky. They're not forward or they're not backwards. Inhale. On your exhale, slowly let your legs come apart. So we've got our bellies engaged. We've got our pelvic floor engaged. It's a slow opening of the gates here, a V shape in your legs. Bring them back together on the inhale. And on the exhale, take them apart again, opening and closing. Some of you report little clicks and snaps on this. As long as it's not associated with pain, it's all good. Lubricating the joints. Bring the legs back up, candlestick legs. Take the soles of the feet together, push them together and let them drop now towards the groin. Push the soles of the feet together like a redwood tree growing out of the forest. Take them up. Do that a few times. Heels down. Soles up. Heels down, soles up. Now bring your knees in towards your chest. Put your right foot on the earth. Put your left foot on the earth. Go ahead and bridge up. Slide your block out from underneath you. Slowly let your body back down onto the earth. Uh, take your right leg over your left for your figure four stretch, piriformis deep stretch. Right ankle bone is outside that left knee. The toes are pulled towards the knee to keep the knee safe. Right hand goes on the right thigh. Go ahead and push the thigh away from you. Not so hard that you skew your pelvis, but just that you open up your hip. Keep your hand pushing towards the front of the rib and towards the sky. See if you can feel that opening. If you'd like to go a little deeper now, take the right hand through the hole in the legs, grab the left hand behind the left knee, keep your sacrum down and straighten out that left knee. Take it up towards the sky and then bend it and then draw the knees in a little closer to your chest. Straighten the left leg. Bend it and draw the knees a little closer to the chest. Sacrum stays down. Straighten the left knee now and keep it straight. Plant our dorsiflex the left ankle. Toes to sky, toes to face. Everything truly is connected here as we move our ankle. The energies, the tides shift through our whole system. Bring the left foot to rest, toes towards the face, and slide your hands down the back of your left thigh. And rather than pulling, push the back of the left hamstring flesh into your hands and free up your hip. If it feels like you can let go without the pose deteriorating, go ahead and let go. And if not, just keep a hold. Let's pause for a moment here. Feel the warmth, energy moving through you. If you're holding your leg, release. Everybody bend your knee, put your foot back down onto the earth. Let's do a single leg bridge. Inhale, exhale, push the left foot into the earth, pull your egg up, tack down your fabric, and lift your hips off the ground. Left foot pressing into the earth, your glutes are firing. On the left side, see if you can find the right side firing so you have a neutral pelvis, and your right butt cheek is not dropped towards the earth. Slowly release again, let the spine come down, skip the low back, imprint the sacrum. This is the best part of the stretch for me. You're gonna roll over onto your left side. So the right foot will go onto the earth. The left hand will hold that right shin. Underneath leg, that left leg, crawl it to the back of the mat. So you get your thigh parallel to the mat. If you can bend your knee and grab your foot or your shin easily enough, do so. If you're fishing for it, don't do so. Ideal world, right shoulder blade will release towards the earth. Rotate, look over that right shoulder. Let the right hip start to move back and forth now like a screen door, articulating through the hip socket. Beautiful. 
If you're holding your leg, release the underneath leg. Right leg still stays crossed as we roll onto our backs. Uncross the right leg, let's do the left. Left crosses over. Ankle bone outside knee joint, toes towards the knee, left hand on the end of your thigh, close to your knee, give it a push towards the front of the room and then towards the sky. Imaging the ball moving away from the socket slightly here. Good, let's go a little deeper now. Take the left hand through the hole in the legs, grab the right hand behind the right knee, interlace your fingers, keep your neck nice and long. Draw the knees up towards the chest. Straighten your right leg, toes to face. Bend it and then pull the knees in a little tighter. Straighten the right leg. Bend it. Pull the knees in a little tighter. Straighten the right leg. Bend it. Pull the knees in tighter. And then straighten the right leg and keep it straight. Dorsiflex, plantar flex that right ankle. Maybe do some circles. If you feel you can hold the pose, take your hands, whoop, forgot this piece, sorry, to the bottom. Rather than pulling, push the back of the right hamstring flesh into your hands. And now if you feel you can maintain position, take your hands away. If you're holding release, everybody put your foot down. Inhale, exhale, push the foot into the earth, pull up your egg, tack down your fabric and lift up. Right foot presses the earth now, so the right glute is contracting, ease you to extend the hips, do the same on the left, try to keep a level pelvis. Slowly release back down towards the earth, skip the low back, imprint the sacrum, you know what's coming now. Inhale, exhale, roll over right side, so left foot goes down. Right hand will hold the ankle. Crawl the underneath leg to the back of your mat, grab the shin if possible. Roll your left shoulder back towards the earth. Let the left hip articulate back and forth like the screen door. And let that come to rest. If you're holding your foot, release it, roll back onto your back, left leg is crossed. Uncross the legs, roll over onto your right side and push up. And let's move into a little twist action. Take your right leg over your left leg. Fist to the earth, grab your blanket if you need to. Lift up, shake it out, put your sit bones down. Big toe of the right foot is on the earth. Your hands are on your knee and you have a big open heart. Your adrenal glands, I mentioned before, live right above your kidneys back here. Adrenal glands have so much to do with our stress response and cortisol. So as we twist, we're squeezing those adrenals, moving the blood flow through, helping to keep them nice and healthy. Let's do this with our muscles. Take your arms up or stick them up arms. We'll all turn to the left to begin with. Inhale. On your exhale, keep your gaze forward, but start to turn your rib cage. As you come up into the shoulder area, then start to turn your head and release your arms. Your right arm will go inside of that right knee and your left hand will be behind you. Keep a big open heart. Inhale. On your exhale, use the push of the right and the pull of the left to create the rotation. Inhale back through center with your stick em up arms. Exhale around for your closed twist now. Take it around. Release the arms. Left elbow, right knee, right hand behind. Use those hands to help to push and pull. We open. Bring it back through center on the inhale and on the exhale, release. Inhale back through center and on the exhale, twist. Back through center, back onto your sit bones. Make this as graceful as possible. Switch your legs opposite way. Fist to the earth, lift, release. Big toe knuckle down. Hands on the knee, big open heart, arms up, 
We'll go to the right, inhale, exhale, twist the cage. When you come to the chest, the head starts to turn, release the arms. Use the push of the left and pull of the right. Imagine coming back through, inhale, exhale. Imagine squeezing all the blood through the organ system. Inhale back through center, exhale right. Inhale back through center, exhale left. And back to center. Okay. I'm gonna recommend that you guys find a comfortable position on your back now and guide you through a sweet shavasana. See if we can bring ourselves back to this beautiful homeostasis. So really your choice, if you'd rather sit, you're welcome to. Otherwise find a comfy place, maybe follow Tiffany's model here on your back, a blanket over you. Maybe a blanket underneath your head. Maybe if you have an eye bag, Put the eye bag on. Take your hands to your mat now. So you'll grab the sides of your mat with your fists. Inhale, and on your exhale, push your hands towards your feet and your body will slide up the mat an inch or two right into Shavasana. Shavasana is the corpse pose. It's our final position preparing for the inevitable. It should be a peaceful state. Where is your breath right now? Is it in your throat? Is it in your collarbones, the ribs, the low belly? Is it evenly distributed? You're welcome to change whatever you'd like. It's more just awareness. Where is my breath now? What's the quality of the breath? Is it a slow, easy inhale and exhale? Is it labored? What's happened to our brains through our practice now to hopefully a calmness? Think of the balancing of scales, some beautiful scales, golden scales. One side is sympathetic, one side is parasympathetic. Those are our flight or fight or rest and digest. I imagine that many of us are closer to the flight or fight or the constant stress. How couldn't you be? But this is the potency of our practice, to be able to redirect these ideas. It's through the breath. Inhale and exhale, finding that slow rhythm, long, slow, deep, intentional breath takes us into our calm and peaceful state. Balancing our scales. We are apart, but we are together. I can't help thinking that there's some sort of higher power or influence that's showing us right now, we better take care of this earth or we will not be here any longer. It seems too coincidental to me that our earth is speaking to us and nobody's listening, so whoever or whatever sent down this virus to make us all very aware of the fragility and need for us to take care of our planet. I am so grateful for this yoga practice. I know many of you are. I've had more time in the last week or so than I have in a very long time to be in my home. I looked through a bunch of files, a bunch of papers I had and came across dozens of notes that patients or yogis have given me over the years that I've been doing this and tears of joy 
flowing from me as I read these things, realizing that we are still very connected. We might not be seeing each other as often as we normally do, but tucked away in the backs of our minds, we know we are loved and cared for. We know that this is something much bigger than just the I. It's now the we taking care of each other, seeing each other through this time. And perhaps we'll emerge on the other side of this more powerful, more connected, much more respectful of this planet of ours. Take a last few moments now in silence. I often ask people to go to one of their favorite places. I recently traveled to Southern India and my place now is out at the beach at Farqala, the Arabian Sea, amazingly beautiful, warm water and sand. Floating with a friend, no cares in the world, bringing ourselves back down to our beautiful homeostasis, even balance. Take a few minutes and go out there. Find the little marble on the back of your skull. It's called the innie and it's the center of your skull. And let your head rock side to side very slowly, starting to wake the system. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bring your physical bodies back to your sweet space. I love that. There's over a hundred of us right now. 200 and something people will eventually see this. We're all in our different space, but we're all so connected. Bend your knees, slide your heels towards your buttocks, glue your knees and ankles together, roll on your right side, away from your heart, and pause there for a moment. This is your transition position. Often inspiring thoughts of generosity, of kindness, of altruism, and seva. I'd love for you to conjure up the image of somebody that maybe needs a little bit of extra love these days, maybe somebody older or somebody that's compromised and shut in. Image their beautiful face as you come back to your seated place. Hold them in your hearts. And let's come back to seated position for our closing.
touch the earth with your fingertips, whatever position you're in, see if you can feel that connection down to the earth, right through the mat of floor, down into the core of the earth and up to the heavens. Let's take our hands to our heart center, thumbs to heart and the heart rises. We pause here reminding ourselves to be so grateful for all that we have. Take your thumbs to your third eye. It's a still contemplation point. It's the all seeing eye. It's the ESP eye. That's our clarity spot. Let's bow to each and every one of us. Namaste. Namaste. Oh my goodness. Thank you, beautiful people. And thank this beautiful lady, Tiffany, my friend and my colleague, and has helped me with this Zoom. I hope that everything went well here, that you could hear us, and that it was a pleasant experience for you. We'd love to hear from you. You guys know I love doing this, so if this is something you'd like to continue, I'm willing to do it maybe once a week, maybe on Sundays at 11, just to keep it uniform. Let's hear from you. If it worked well, then good for us. And let's be kind to each other, please, and keep our distance physically, but stay so connected emotionally. Of course, I would be giving Tiffany a big old hug, but we're trying to maintain our social distancing. <laughs> Namaste, my friends. See you soon.